Hello, welcome to another video. So today I have this uh, load tester that I bought on Amazon and it's kind of a standalone product but it's supposed to be just kind of a universal thing. You can turn the knob up here and get more current. And uh, this came with its, a power supply to plug it into the mains. And this thing is like super cheap and nasty. I mean, it's basically no weight to it at all. And uh, you know, I have 12 volt power supplies that have adequate amount of current. So I figured I would uh, just swap it out for one of these. and. But I was just curious about the difference between these two power supplies, so I'm going to uh, crack them open, take a look, we'll look at the efficiency, we'll look at how much uh, power they use overall, what their current uh, harmonic distortion looks like, stuff like that. And, you know, I expect a lot of similarities there, but um, I don't expect this power supply to be very reliable, um, but I expect this one to be reliable. So one of the first things I'm going to check is um, isolation. So we're just doing a measurement with an ohm meter. Uh, I know it's not a high voltage test, but we're just going to see if there's any uh, impedance connecting between the AC side and the DC side. So we're just going to shove that lead in there, test this on here. Now if I touch it with my finger, I can make the meter go off like that. Uh, but here we can see there is a little bit of a connection. We got about 30 mega ohms between the two sides. But that, that would be a, considered a passing result um, for an isolated power supply of this level. So this isn't a particularly high efficiency unit, um, but it does have appropriate ratings. Um, this is just something I grabbed out of the bin. It's another you know very inexpensive power supply, but at least it does have the you know appropriate TUV and UL markings. So another thing to talk about is having appropriate markings on your products. So one thing that the cheap power supply doesn't have is any markings at all, whereas this one does have a TUV and a UL listed mark. So that means this was you know tested for compliance and made sure that it was actually safe. So next thing we're gonna do is go ahead and crack this thing open. All right, so I got the less cheap power supply open and we can see that this thing is loaded. And one of the things we looked at on the bottom, we can see that there is actually some resistance between the two sides. You can see I have our opto isolator with a slot cut in it. Look at the very, very large we have an opto isolator here with a slot cut in the board. Across, we have a lot of separation. And in this leg, they extended way out, so you have a lot of separation. We also notice that this capacitor is very, very thick, so that's going to survive, uh, you know, any kind of high transients, things like that. It's going to be very reliable. Um, you can see these things are built very different. A lot more components on this board. It, it looks like it's got the a lot more of the safety components you would expect to see on a proper power supply. Also the transformer is of specific note. And then you can see that these are your secondary windings on top of being pretty heavy. They're also sleeved and then sleeved again before they're wound inside the transformer and there's no way for this to get near the primary side connections over here. So you got a lot of isolation there. And that just ensures that this device is more safe. And you can see the output diode is actually just connected to this whole heatsink piece right here. And then they actually just wrap this in tape. That's not great, but it, it, it is functional. They wrap this in tape to isolate it because the heatsink had to stick out over to the main side. So that's the maybe the weakest part of this whole thing is that is connected. So this isn't perfect either, but that's our example of a kind of a mid-tier, little little bit inexpensive, but also a very good power supply. Yeah, overall, you have your good separation on your transformer, you have a pass on the measurable resistance between the input and output, and you have it certified by UL and TUV. It's got all the requisite safety components inside. Uh, it's a cheap power supply, it's okay. You know, you can see the efficiency is a little bit better. The power factor is not great because the type of power supply this is. And yeah, that's about it. It did go up to the 150% rated load as well, so. Today we're gonna be looking at this uh, cheapest chips power supply, so. Got a model number on there. You can see it's got a universal input voltage rating. Doesn't have any official ratings or anything, so we'll see, uh, you know, no certifications. So we'll see how it does. And we're gonna crack it open and look at the isolation inside too and see if it's really any good or if it's just kinda half of what it should be. So got a few questions on it and uh, well, basically, You know, we want to see if it's any good. We want to 
take a look at its efficiency and basically the, the condition of the power. So we'll take a look at the harmonic distortion and the power factor as well as the efficiency. And when we crack it open, we're going to look at the separation to see if it's safe or not. And then uh, see if there's any measurable resistance between the input to output. So we'll measure the input to the output and see if there's any, you know, noticeable connection already just statically in the power supply, which would be an instant fail in a compliance test. And then obviously we already kind of looked at this, but it doesn't have any certification. You know, it has the uh, CE mark, which is a self-certification, which doesn't really mean anything. And then it's got made in China, but I don't see a UL, TUV, or Intertech mark on there. So, um, so first thing we'll do is we'll uh, take a look at the multimeter reading, see if there's any any DC resistance across it. So we can shove one of these in here. And we'll put this on here and see if we get anything on the meter at all. Let's see anything. That's a good sign. Put this in there. Nothing. Try swapping these around. No connection, so that's a good sign. Let's see. Yeah, they're working. So, so that's a, that's a good. That's a uh, pass on the first thing. So the next part of the test would be to to do some some power measurements on it. And now I'll go through one just for an example, and then uh, I'll go ahead and do the rest of them off camera and. We can take a look at them. So first thing, I'm just going to plug it in. So you can see uh, some power numbers start to pop up on the analyzer over here. And I'm going to go ahead and plug this in. This is just a load tester. And uh, this will just give you a little bit of an indication. So you can see the voltage coming out. And right now, we're not using any amps. So this power supply is just plugged in to our mains and then plugged into that. So you can see it's using at idle doing nothing about 2.3 milliamps. We got about a 0.35 power factor and we're using about a tenth of a watt. So that's not too bad really considering that it's, this is just an idle state. Um, so those are pretty acceptable numbers. Let's take a look at the harmonic distortion. So that's where it's really not so great. We obviously saw the really low power factor, but now you look over here and you see that the total harmonic distortion on the current line, the voltage is gonna be low percentage because that's just the AC mains uh, waveform. So it's not gonna be different there. Uh, but the current harmonic distortion is very high, about 215%, which is, is not, that's not very good. So this thing's got some terrible shaped, definitely not a sine wave. So that's the idle power. So then we can go ahead and start turning on a little bit of current. So there's 0.1 amps. So right now we're using about 1.2 watts on the output if we multiply these two numbers together. It does say right on the display 1.21 watts. And then if we look over here, we can see we're using about 1.83 watts at this condition. And then we have our 0.47 power factor. We have our current. And if we look at the harmonic distortion, Amps THD, it's about 178%. So it's got a little bit better, but it's still really bad. Um, so it's gonna be sending all kinds of stuff back down, back down this line into your plug. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and go through and take the rest of this data and I'll fill in the chart. All right, here it is. It's uh, running at 100% load right now. I've gone through and collected all the numbers and you can, you can feel it's starting to get a little warm. There is nothing to this box. It weighs almost nothing. Um, but you can actually feel a little heat coming out of it and uh, overall it doesn't look too bad. The efficiency went from at a 10% low was 65% which is actually really good and then I uh, peaked out around 78.5% efficiency at 50% load and then it actually went all the way up to 150% load and was still around 75% efficiency at that point so that's that's really not terrible. Uh, the power factor is miserable so it was using a lot of VA so there is a lot of uh, current loss happening um, within the system. So, you know, uh, the reason why we look at watts in and VA in is because when you're budgeting for current on a system, you need to budget for the VA, not the watts, because this is current that's actually going to be present on the circuit. Whether it's actually real power that's being used, you know, will change things. But um, 
you know, if you budget for the watts, you likely will go over your current budget. But if you budget for VA, you should be fine. Uh, the total harmonic distortion seemed to decrease as it went up through the, the steps. So it went all the way down to 80% THD on the current at the 150% load, which is still terrible, but it's okay. Um, you know, for this type of power supply, for something that, I mean, probably costs next to nothing to make, um, that's, that's really pretty acceptable. So the next thing to do is to break this thing open and take a look at the separation inside and see if it's uh, acceptable. All right, well, I was able to pop that open real easy and it's, oh, it's cheap and nasty inside and that's probably coming at a surprise to no one. There's a little LED there. There's no actual place for the LED to shine through here, but it does have an LED in there. Uh, inside. I wonder if we plug it in quick and don't touch anything. If we can see that LED. Yep, it's got a nice, nice bright blue LED in there that you can't see from outside the case because they were too cheap to put a hole in it. <laughs> I can feel that's quite hot. Let's actually get the thermal camera out and take a look at this thing. So this was only running for about 10 minutes on full load. Let's see what we got here. How hot did that get? Uh, it's not terrible. You can see all the losses in that transformer. But again, this was only on for a short period of time. So how hot would that get after a long period of time is an unknown. And I got a big old electrolytic capacitor there on the inlet. It's a 10 microfarad, 400 volt name I can't pronounce. I do, that's a tiny bridge rectifier. It's got a fusible resistor on the inlet. What I want to know is if there's a resistor across this. It looks like there is not. So we're just going to check to make sure that voltage is low, down to two volts. So that's acceptable circuit should be safe to touch things and uh first thing we see is actually got a, a nice clearance slot uh going across the board um they have a tiny class y capacitor there it's rated one kv no markings on it uh it's really really thin so i highly doubt that that's actually up to the proper job but it it almost looks like it would do the trick the led is extremely rusty for some reason so it's almost like this was made in a very wet place. The chip that's on there is a CSC7203. CSC7203. So that's the control chip. It does have an opto-isolator, which is connected through a very basic circuit, just a, a zener diode and a resistor for regulation. So, and it, and it does do a good job of regulating the output voltage. Uh, 680 microfarad 16 volt cap on the output that's okay single diode for uh, rectifying the transformer output you know pretty chintzy cheap wires but you know they're doing the job so it's okay input uh these are pretty small wires as well but hopefully that fusible resistor would do its job bridge rectifier going straight through and then just a very 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 few support components on there um let's see that transformer and the one question we have is what's the separation on this transformer so I might sacrifice this in the uh, the name of science to see if this is really a, a halfway decent power supply or not I mean overall it's it's definitely very 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 cheap and there's you know nothing in here um, it certainly doesn't have some of the protections you'd see on other power supplies um, no line filtering at all whatsoever so all that harmonic the high harmonic content we saw is just you know just goes right back out through the circuit all right I made your weight and here's the reason why you don't buy these power supplies so it's gonna be pretty hard to see this I'm gonna try and zoom in and get real close so that's the separation between the inlet and the outlet. It's zero. 
they're literally touching each other. That bigger wire is the secondary winding. That smaller wire is the primary winding. They're literally on each other. So if there's any overheating on this transformer, that enamel that's on that wire gets hot. You're talking about catastrophic meltdown. You can see that side's got a little bit better. But if you look over here, total failure. Right on top of each other. So that right there is the reason why you don't buy these because they are not safe. So I had hopes for this one. If that transformer was built okay, it would have been all right, but it isn't. It's terrible. So if we look at our summary chart, we can see that overall a couple of the things were okay. You know, overall efficiency wasn't that bad. The power factor is not the worst thing I've ever seen. Um, you know, it went up to 150% of its rated load. Um, so obviously it doesn't have any shutdown in it, so it'll just keep delivering power until it catches on fire. Uh, so that might not be a pass. It has no certification, which is obvious because it would never have passed any tests the way it's set up. So it's okay. Not. Don't buy this. It's terrible. Um, there's a few things on here that stand out to me. Is This, this class Y capacitor looks like it's uh, definitely... Uh, not really up to the task. I mean, that's the one thing that's one of the things that's isolating you between the two sides. It does have an isolation section on the bottom. Could be wider, but it, it's adequate. Uh, but then the transformer itself has absolutely no isolation. It's it's basically connected. Um, in any kind of condition where this gets warm, which you can say I only ran it for a short period of time. This is in an enclosed plastic box. This thing's going to get hot it's going to fail. It's going to connect the mains to your DC load and it's going to shock somebody and cause a serious problem. So overall, this does not get any kind of rating for approval. It's it's not safe. It is not an appropriate uh, power supply to use for anything. If you have one of these, uh, get rid of it. Get something else. So oddly enough, this is actually the power supply that came with this and uh, I just felt the weight of it and said, there's no way this is any good. So I do have a proper power supply I'm using with this unit. Uh, just because I knew that this, this wasn't, wasn't appropriate in any way. So in conclusion, don't buy this thing. It's not safe. It's not appropriate. The isolation's not good enough. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe.